find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Welcome back, guys. 2015 is the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, glad you could join us. It's our, hell, our year anniversary here, actually, uh, that we started this. Uh, uh, 50 great interviews we had, and we're looking to get another 50 more in, starting off strong here on episode 51. And uh, I'm, of course, Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron, on the Twitters, uh, producer of uh, some fine wrestling content, video-wise here, of Sorgatron Media with International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and etc., over at pittsburghwrestling.com and of course my compatriot down in san antonio texas well not at the moment but it's usually where he resides Cur- well currently corpus christi next week i'll be back in san antonio and, and be in my regular um abode but on location i guess you could say he's Amon um, payton or i like to call him Amon patron because Sorg, because Sorg still loves this but that's my name listen i'm still i'm still kind of uh, uh wonked out from from the California trip, so uh, I'm still working on this. Uh, but he's at Amen yeah. 2 please. He's a commentator down at NWA Inspire Pro Wrestling, writer for NWA Ringside, and I'm sure he'll have a hundred new titles by the end of the year. Oh God, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not for my own sanity. <laughs> And of course, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. We like to talk indie wrestling. We talk, like to talk with indie wrestlers, people in the indie wrestling business, um, because because somebody needs to. We love this stuff. We want to let you guys uh, in on on these secrets out there. Uh, of course, you can find us here. We're at 11 p.m. Uh, every Tuesday night at live.sorgatronmedia.com. If you want to join us in the chat room, ask questions, uh, and, and be the first to check it out. Or you can check out this and all the other shows over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Subscribe to all the stuff on iTunes, on YouTube, on Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. And, of course, you can drop us a line yourself at 412-206-WMS0 or good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can find Wrestling Mayhem Show at Mayhem Show on the Twitter or Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Facebook groups, and Google+. <sighs> and, of course, big thanks to Basic Sickness, BasicSickness.com for the intro and outro music that we be jamming. Eamon, who do we have with us this week? We have a very special guest this week on the first uh, Indie Mayhem Show 2015. Uh, this is a talent that I definitely want to have on for a good while. Uh, he's making a lot of waves throughout the Texas wrestling scene, uh, especially this past year. Uh, he's worked for Inspire Pro Wrestling as well as uh, his home promotion of NWA Wrestling Revolution uh, and a couple others. Uh, please uh, welcome to the show the one and only Eric Shadows. Eric, how are you doing this? Evening. What's going on, guys? Man, thank you for having me on the first show of the Indie Mayhem, man. I didn't even think I was going to make it on the first one. Hell, I didn't <laughs> even think I'd ever make it on you guys. But I mean, hey, it feels good to be liked by you guys. <laughs> no problem, absolutely. Uh, guess the first question we can ask, and, and sort of an, an, an icebreaker of sorts that uh, we tend to ask a lot of our guests, uh, since we're all you know gotten to this uh, one way or the other, is uh, what is your first ever memory of watching professional wrestling? Oh man, the one million dollar question, huh? Um, <laughs> damn, if I can even remember that far back, I actually remember how it went down. I'm not really exactly sure how old I was, um, but I just remember specifically I was home. It was a uh, Wednesday, I believe. So I remember I was waiting for Friday so I can go to my cousin's house. I was about possibly eight or nine. I'm gonna say eight years old. Mm. And I remember I was just flipping through channels. I was like, all right, you know, I think my dad was done watching some kind of Western movie. And I was like, all right, my turn, you know. And I remember scrolling and I passed through what the channel was originally TNT. That's where I discovered WCW. Now, I, I passed through it. And all I, I remember seeing was it was a guy, some guys with long hair duking it out. And they just had these colorful tights. And I, I passed through and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What was that? Hold on. I turned back and I was just astonished. I remember it was Chris Jericho versus Eddie Guerrero. Mm. You know, what a way to be introduced to wrestling, huh? <laughs> so I was watching and I was in awe. And I remember I told my dad, I was like, Dad, what is this? And then he's like, Oh, that's wrestling. You don't want to watch that. You know, and I'm like, No, what, what, no, I do, I do. You know, what is this? <laughs> and, you know, he, you know, he gave me the skeptics, like, Oh, you know, this and that. But I was just blown away by these guys they were they were going all over the place they were bouncing off the ropes you know clotheslining each other drop kick left and right hurricanas 
you know, moves I didn't know back then, but, you know, as a kid, you're just, you know, you're just like a deer in headlights. Whoa, what is this? You know, and, and from there, you know, I listened to the commentators and they said, okay, ladies and gentlemen, you can join us every Monday night right here on the TNT Network or whatever. And I was hooked from there on. Awesome. And, and, and I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll mention further about, uh, you know, your style in wrestling, but would you say that those kind of, like you mentioned, the Jerichos, the Guerreros, and, and maybe a lot of the Cruiserweight style guys are are the type of guys that influence you just the, in that kind of style? To be honest, it's it's kind of funny, but you're going to freak out. They, they actually had no influence on me at the time. It was uh, mainly Sting at the time. I just remember he came out through the rafters, and I'm like, that guy's a badass. I want to be that guy. Right. And and the high-flying sense, it was actually Juventud Guerrera. Uh, that actually, yeah, like, it was just, I don't know, like, I was never really into the Lucha Libre thing. I love the masks, but him, he just came off like, I don't know, like, I couldn't describe him. I just remember every time he came out, I was hooked to the TV. I didn't want to be bothered. I wanted to watch his match, you know, and I remember it kind of broke my heart when he took his mask off, because that's actually what had it for me as a kid. So when he took his mask off, he was just like any other guy to me, and I was like, ah, I don't like him. And then I like Rey Mysterio, you know, and it just carried on from there. But uh, as far as influencing on my career, Sting started it. Shawn Michaels pretty much hook, line, and sinkered it. Awesome. So, so you definitely expanded it even beyond like the WCW stuff, and you just started finding finding more stuff to get into from there. Yeah, I didn't discover WWF until they actually started talking about the Monday Night Wars, and I would always say, "What are they talking about? What is this other company?" And when WCW went to commercials, I went through channels again, and then I remember I saw the Road Warriors cutting a promo, and I'm like, "Holy crap! There's more of them." And then I just remember every Monday night frustratingly flipping through channels like, all right, it's their turn. All right, it's their turn. They're in commercials. You know, and then I just started discovering more and more wrestlers, and I, I just went from there. Awesome. Definitely. Uh, so talk now about sort of um, you, you're talking, you're getting into wrestling, and, and you're really starting to, to fall in love with stuff. When and where do you sort of make your decision that you want to do this and, and, and transition to becoming a professional wrestler? Oh, man, it, it was – it was a roller coaster ride for me, man. I, I remember, you know, my parents were telling me like, nah, that's fake. And, you know, you're not going to get into that. That's stupid. Blah, 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 blah. And I ended up getting into like other violent sports, you know, which my mom never really backed me up on, but I liked it. I was a violent kid growing up. <laughs> um, I remember I got into boxing around age of 13. I did that for two years. And then I ended up joining Muay Thai at 14, going all the way to 16 and from there, you know, my brother would tell me, like, hey, well, you know, join jujitsu. I was basically going down the, you know, mixed martial arts road. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember graduating high school and I thought, yeah, you know, I want to pursue it. I want to make it to UFC and whatnot. And I can't explain it to this day what happened. But one day I hung up my punching bag and I thought, what the hell? You know, like, I don't know. I didn't know if it was a lazy day or if it was just something wrongly. But I eventually realized, holy crap, I am bored. I'm bored doing this. You know, I was, I was, I just remember calling my brother, I'm like, Hey Pete, you know, I'm, I'm not ready. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm, I'm bored. You know, he thought something was mentally wrong with me. Like, are you okay? Is everything all right at home? And I'm like, I'm good. I just, I don't like it. None of these guys had personality. You know, every time I'm in there, you know, if you watch me, I mean, even you've been there every time I'm in Inspire, man, you know, I'm always having a good time. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter yeah. if it's a giant or if it's 50 guys, I'm having fun doing battle out there. I, know, I think and I think I think one of the things is kind of what you're talking about is it's just a different energy when it comes to you know professional wrestling as opposed to like something like a mixed martial arts or something like that. Exactly. Yeah, and a lot of my opponents at the time were mistaking me for this cocky little crappy kid. Oh, he thinks he could fight better than me, huh? And I'm like, dude, no. I mean, if we're gonna fight each other, might as well make this fun. You know, let's bring mm -hmm. you know some entertainment to these people. Besides, let's just beat our brains out, right? So I hung up my gloves, if you want to call it that. And I just remember I was just working at a job and it's, it's the craziest thing. Nobody would expect this way, how I got introduced to it. This guy wanted me to recommend him a soccer ball. I was working at a sports store and I was in, a, I was in the crappiest of mood that day. And I remember I just wanted to get rid of this customer. He started talking about, you know, oh, what ball do you recommend? And I feel like, I don't know if I can say ass, but I felt like such an ass at the time because I was in the crappiest mood. So I wasn't even being, you know, professional. I wasn't being courteous. 
he remember I, I remember him asking me what ball do you recommend. I took a soccer ball out of a box, I bounced it, and I put it on his chest. I'm like, there you go, it bounces, it's good. <laughs> and I I thank him. I mean, I haven't seen him for about three years, or probably even more than that. But I thank him for not walking away from me because if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be anywhere in a wrestling ring or anywhere near one. And that goes as far as like four or five other guys that you might know of, because I wouldn't have given them the word. Hey, you know, I just remember him telling me something about wrestling. I thought he was talking about high school wrestling. So I thought, Oh no, that's cool. You know? And then he says, no, no, no. They're, they kind of do a, the, what WWE does. I'm like, don't you lie to me like that. <laughs> and he told me about these training grounds where there's this Mexican Lucha Libre uh, promotion. And I was like, Oh no, I'm not into that stuff. You know? And he's like, no, no, they have American pro wrestling. And I'm like, really? And I told my best friends, I'm like, yo, let's go check it out. We end up going. And I mean, long story short, I thought we were going into a drug deal because <laughs> the first thing I remember is it was at a flea market, but it was at night. It was a Tuesday night. I remember. And as soon as we pulled into a gate, the gate literally closes behind us. Like somebody closed it. Then another car turns on and they start driving behind us. I start looking, okay, well, you guys know who Matt Wright is. That's my partner, yes, my little yeah. brother. I remember I looked right at him and I said, dude, I am so sorry I got you into this. I just hope <laughs> you forgive me in the next life. If anything happens, stay in the truck. You take off. I'll do whatever I can to make sure nothing happens to you guys. And this is why I love this guy. He, he slapped me in the chest. He's like, you better shut the hell up. You know I'm going with you. And that is why we are how we are. So anyways, we get there, and as soon as I get out of my truck, we're walking towards this warehouse, and I hear slams and screams, and I'm like, oh, God, they're killing them. They're beating the hell out of them. <laughs> and I walk in through a gate. I remember it was a wooden gate, and there's guys running around a wrestling ring. There's guys grappling inside, and I was just like, holy crap, this is real. This is great. So I meet one of the co one of the co-owners of Wrestling Revolution, Willie Starnes, and... I remember he came in like such a bad. I was like, oh, okay, so you're the new kids, huh? All right, let's see what you got. Go and play in the ring. I was like, okay, I guess. And we stepped in. They showed us the basics. And six months later, Eric Shadows was born. Awesome. Now, now speaking of Wrestling Revolution, uh, this is a promotion I think uh, in 2014 especially has shown uh, to be one of the places I think that is producing and, and, and developing and creating a lot of younger up-and-coming talents uh, in the state of Texas, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you as well, as well as countless others um, are, are now, you know, expanding to other groups, but a lot of it comes from Wrestling Revolution, and I hear amazing things, I've, I've always wanted to check out the show because I always hear amazing things about uh, uh, that company. Uh, what's mm -hmm. it like been working for them, uh, and I guess, because it's a company that I think you would say you consider basically your home promotion? Right. Yeah, it's, it's really flattering, man, like how a lot of I, I hear a lot of outside guys that, you know, they want to come down and, you know, yeah, man, you know, how, how is it down there? And, and it's really inspiring. Like, honestly, to me, you know, no pun intended. <laughs> it's just, it feels good because we, we do have a lot of guys. And I think because we're on a weekly basis, you know, we get to have that much more, I guess, experience, you know, and I'm not trying to bash anybody else that, you know, works monthly or they try to get bookings every weekend, you know, back to back. But, um, but yeah, like I'm actually honored to be able to work with a lot of guys that are breaking out, you know, rather from last year or even this year, you know, like, like Danny Ramon, Terry Ramones, you know, for a prime example. Definitely. And, and, and well, I mean, to work there, it's, how can I explain it? It has ups and downs, you know, if there's, there's some weeks where like, you know, the crowd, like they know we're there, but they get caught up in their own little life. So, you know, we'll have a, a like crazy packed crowd one week and the next week it's like, yeah, it's halfway, but you know what? They're still into it. But just like any other city in Texas or any, basically anywhere in the nation, you know, every crowd and environment has a little different feel for it. You know, you have California mm -hmm. where, you know, they, they love the crazy spots, you know, they love these flippy kicks and, you know, just beautiful art in the ring. And, you know, back home in WR, you know, you have people that they, they, they strive for all these bad guys to just get buried into the ground and stay there. You know, they, they love their little good guys, you know, and, and it's cool. So, you know, if you're a hero, they're going to love you down there. If you're a bad guy, they want you dead and burned. So working there, it's, it's, a, it's a nice breath of fresh air for a lot of guys because they, they love new faces, you know, right? Whether you're bad or good, they're going to like you until you give them a reason not to like you, you know, but working there, I can say I'm blessed because, 
it gives me the opportunity to, you know, hone and keep improving on my craft every week rather than, okay, there goes that show. Oh, see you guys next month. All right, what do I do? All right, let's hit the gym 50 times before that happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it definitely gives, gives you an opportunity to, like you said, like working weekly and, and getting to improve. Uh, and you mentioned exactly. sort of, uh, um, you know, the, the whole – uh, bad guy scenario. I know in Wrestling Revolution, you you uh, had a bit of a transformation uh, with a, a couple of group of guys, uh, Matt Riot being one of them uh, that you mentioned, right. uh, uh, and and you seem to be uh, uh, taking over that organization uh, uh, by your own terms. Uh, what what has that been like, sort of uh, 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 with that with that group? I believe uh, Novum Genius, Novum Genus, if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. I apologize, but uh, Novum Genus. Guinness. Okay, I, I I wanted to make sure I get that pronunciation right. It's but, cool. Um, it's cool. Uh, uh, what's that been like? Well, I don't know what just happened to me at one point. It was a little bit after I lost the main title. Is when I just I don't know. If everybody sees it as a change of heart. I just saw it as an opening of the eyes. Like I said, there's certain places that I go to, and I love the city. You know, like Austin. I can tell you from the bottom of my heart is my absolute favorite place to be. As soon as they, you guys reach out to me, Inspire Pro, are you going to be here? I'm there. You don't even have to wait for the answer. I'm already answering yes. <laughs> you know, but down here in McAllen, it's just, I just saw different things from the people. I figured, you know what? They don't care for me. Why should I care for them? So I was always the go-to guy. Hey, you know what? This guy's getting out of hand. Nobody's going to, wait, shadows will stop him. You know, but it wasn't so much that I was appreciated. So I thought, you know, if I'm not going to be appreciated, I'm a real blunt guy, even, you know, to, to throw it down to honesty. I'm a real blunt guy. I'm straight to the point. You ask me a question, I'm going to tell you the honest answer. Whether you think it's good or bad, I'm just telling you my opinion, you know. And, well, you know, to be honest, I was frustrated. So I thought, you know what, I think it's time for a change. I've proven myself as a hero. You know what, how about they prove to me something? You know, so I decided to go my own route. You know, of course, a lot of people aren't going to agree with me. Uh, Matt Wright at the time wasn't really agreeing with me, so I had to actually battle him a few times until he realized, you know what, he is fighting for the wrong cause. So he joined me, and then we ended up building our stable now to the four that we've always wanted. Matt Riot, Eric Shadows, Danny Chance, and Ray Knight. So what we're trying to do is we're not really trying to take over the promotion. We pretty much kind of already did you know, they've they they've thrown any kind of resistance at us, and we've pretty much opposed all of them. Yeah, we're more we're more likely trying to actually prove a point that you know there's elite warriors all over the place, no matter somewhere where you look. It's just we're trying to make sure everybody knows who we are. Definitely, absolutely, and it definitely seems like you four seem to be on that mission, and 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 are going forward with it. Um, to talk right. about, uh, uh, and you've been in the wrestling business now for uh, a, a few years now. Uh, to talk, um, right. if if you can think of some of uh, your favorite opponents that you wrestled, uh, uh, maybe some matches that you have that that you were really proud of. Uh, uh, what what are some that kind of come to mind? I remember the first favorite match I actually had was actually against Sammy Guevara, which is one of my favorite opponents up to date. He was actually my first out of town opponent as far as, you know, someone from up north in Texas. Like up to then, it was around my second year of my career. I remember I was just, you know, wrestling anybody that was coming in, but it was around, you know, the South Texas area. And yeah, I've had great opponents and there are people that I've wrestled that I've had amazing matches with, but he was the first one before them. And he was the first one that actually pushed me to like my limits. You know, I thought, you know what? Nobody, nobody keeps up with me. All my opponents, they come out of my matches tired, you know, exhausted. And I'm not bragging. I'm just, I don't know. I get tired very rarely so whenever I have someone that actually makes me feel like, oh, my God, I'm dying, that is when I'm having the most fun because they're pushing me to the limit. So when Sammy came down, that was the first one that actually put pressure on me where I'm like, holy crap, am I going to uh, even last this guy? <laughs> and that match was you know, happening, and that went well. But to say my absolute favorite opponent, I'm going to have to go with a guy that actually won us an award in 2013 was uh, we ended up getting match of the year. And as a matter of fact, the company itself told us that we were the best match in the 10 plus years that Wrestling Revolution has been alive, that we've had the best match of the entire company. It was Danny Chance. Awesome. 
Definitely you know, and, and, and a, a huge honor. Yeah, exactly. And and we were we were just just blown away. We didn't think it was going to be. We knew it was good because of the emotion behind what we both wanted, and that was the Grand Warrior title. But it's just the way it was brought upon us. You know, he he ended up going that route of you know what being the good guy and shaking hands and whatnot is going to get me the title. I'm going to take it from you, you know, and that inspired that war. So I guess that is what caused the emotion for everybody to say that was the match of the year and the best match of the company, which I never let my head get big, but I take pride in that. And I always strive to, you know, keep being that guy, keep being the guy that is going to make that match happen, which is another, it goes back to Shawn Michaels. You know, there is no match of Shawn Michaels that you can say, eh, that was all right. That was kind of boring. You know, and I, 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 I keep that in the back of my head all the time. It's like, doesn't matter what's out there. You go out there and you make it the best match of the night if you can, you know. Definitely a, a really good man. Uh, forward uh, into uh, 2015, and I know since it is, you know, around the time of uh, New Year's, uh, everyone's, you know, making their goals and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what are some of your goals for, for your career going forward? Uh, stuff you may want to accomplish, uh, places, people you'd like to wrestle. Um, uh, do you have any uh, sort of in mind? Ooh, well, um, it's a, there's a little other career that just got a hold of me um, back in December this past year. And I've kind of kept it on the down low, but I mean, I don't know. I guess everyone's going to hear it here. Uh, I'll be traveling to Los Angeles later this month, and it's not really wrestling. It's going to be more of a Hollywood opportunity that I'll be taking. Oh, nice. So, you know, yeah. So as far as uh, wrestling goes, I have a huge list of guys, you know, I'd love to face. And I don't really want to put wrestling down for now. So I'm going to try to juggle both and see if I can actually manage both. But it's probably going to be more of a part-time thing for me. But I'll definitely try my very best to make sure these matches happen. Um, I mean, hell, I, I, I have a long list, but I can give you a top five if that's what you want. Oh, definitely. I, I, as many as you'd like. All right. Um, let's see off the top of my head, you know, some, some of these are local and, you know, whoever's listening to this and they say, ah, why them? Y'all go suck something else because you know what? These guys are awesome to me. When I saw them, I wanted to wrestle them. <laughs> uh, I'll start from, you know, this is no particular order. It's just. Whoever comes first, great. Uh, Andy Dalton, mm. I remember I, just, I, I discovered this guy, and he came off just disgusting, but he was conceited about it, and I thought, I want to get in the ring with this guy. And then I see his style, and, you know, he's a kick you in the face, then slap you with a sweaty palm, and then probably piss on you if he can get away with it. And I think, <laughs> you know, it sounds disgusting, but you know what? It's a thrill because it's something different. You don't see that anywhere. So, Andy Dalton, for sure, if you're listening to this, your ass, I want it in the ring. No homo. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another guy was actually in the same match as Dalton, uh, Gregory James. You know, just mm -hmm. the way just the way he entered. It was actually at Inspire at the very first show, which, again, I was very honored to be a part of. But that's another story. Anyways, um, just the way he entered, I thought, holy crap, something's demented about this guy. And his style reminded me a little bit of me, but it was just more sinister. It was more darker. So I thought, holy crap, we probably throw it down and blow the roof off this place or any place we're at. So that's one of the top five that I want in. Uh, Kyle Hawks, another one of them. You know, I, I know he's got a hold of me and he's called me out from time to time. It's just nobody will have us. Don't know why. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's a match that would be worth watching, at least in my book. Um, just his style of, you know, you, you think an Indian, you don't think anything crazy, but he has a very unorthodox kind of style. And I'd really like to get my hands on that to see if I can keep up and if I can even top him, you know? So Kyle Hogg, you're also another one of those, you know, hit list, if you will. Um, I know ACH posted at one time and it caught my attention cause he tagged me in it, but he was in St. Louis at the time. And he says, I'll, I want to come back and wrestle in Texas, but only if I wrestle Eric Shadows. And it caught my attention. I thought, <laughs> bring it. Bring it, buddy. You know, so for sure, that caught me to watch more of his stuff. And, you know, everybody knows ACH, you know, he goes, he goes hard. 
And I look at it as a challenge and it would be an honor, you know, no matter where we wrestle, whether I can actually get into ring of honor and fight him there or anywhere else that he can meet up with me. So, uh, um, that's I, I, another I one. I uh, wrestling revolution just recently too. So, you know, you never know where, yeah. where, where that can happen. Exactly. Yeah. He was right there on home turf, but not against me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. Top, the uh, top guy I think I would want to is, I mean, it, it might not happen, and it might. If it does, Awesome was one of my idols, and that's AJ Styles. That'd be, and, that, that would be a definitely uh, big one. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, I know it's a big stake to take a bite out of, but, you know, I like challenges. You know, you, you saw me this past Sunday take on a big stake, if you will, mm-hmm. and it's just it's just a new thing for me. But most definitely, AJ Styles did have a finalized, you know, inspiration on my career. Because I look at him, and he's a, he's around, what, his mid-30s, late 30s, somewhere on there? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, somewhere around that. You know, you know and, and he moves just as fast as any guys younger or even my age. So I think, you know what, if he can do it, there's no excuses. I should be able to be there at that age. So it would be pretty freaking cool to actually look across the ring and say, okay, AJ Styles, my opponent. Let's kick some ass. <laughs> let's, see, let's, <laughs> let's not die. Definitely. I think, I think any of those uh, would be really, really great. Uh, um, mm-hmm. Guess to close, uh, close out here, this is the um, sort of the typical question that we ask everyone. It's, it's sort of a, a common question about independent wrestling. We, and, and both me and Sorv working in various uh, aspects of independent wrestling, uh, we see a lot of it. Uh, uh, the question we ask all our guests, uh, and feel free to take the question uh, in any direction that you want. Uh, but uh, I would like to ask uh, Eric Shadows, what do you think is the best thing about independent wrestling, and what is the worst thing about independent wrestling? Oh, thank you for asking. Uh, <laughs> best best thing about it is, I it's it's a spirit that nobody really sees. You know, the road trips that these guys take. You know, the the experience they have either either before or after shows you know, or just the feels in the locker room before a show's going off or even while the show going off, it's, it's almost, you know, it's, it's friendly, but then it's, you know, it has its dangers and it has its fun and, you know, things that aren't so fun. It's, how can I explain this? I love that there's so many things that you can learn from it. There's so many things that you, there's so many people you meet, you know, good and bad, Mm -hmm. but uh, overall, I love that it's it's do it yourself. You know what I mean. The work you put in is the work you get back. You know, yeah, we're not WWE superstars. We're not we're not at all in New Japan Pro Wrestling. But you know what? It's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure for anybody that's an independent wrestler listening to this, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys have ran into some local citizens and they say, hey, you know, you're so and so, or hey, you're that wrestler guy. Holy crap, dude! I saw your match. Last week, that was awesome, you know, and, and that I'm pretty sure that's a really good feeling for someone that went from, you know, sitting in front of a TV glued to it, you know, before going to bed to actually being one of the guys that people want to shake hands and take pictures with, you know, and I, I think it's just a great feeling, you know, when, you know, I see someone post that their kids say, you know, for example, oh, you know, my son decided to sit on the wolf in the carousel because he wants to make Eric Shadows happy. <laughs> like it brings a tear to my, it, it brings tears to my eyes because I think when, when would I have ever thought in my entire life that I can actually make an impact on a child? You know, you know, I, I thought I was a child. Like that's how I see all indie wrestlers. We're just children living our lives, you know, we're living our dreams, so to speak. And when there's other children that actually look up to us and now we're the heroes, I can honestly say that's like my absolute favorite thing. You know, when I can actually connect with people like that. You know, and that, that goes the same for in the ring. You know, I've had people crying, watching me in pain. And I think, you know, <laughs> I know it's bad, but this is awesome because <laughs> they're, they're in just as much pain as I am. Just by watching me, I must be doing something right. So to me, that that is probably one of the best things in my eyes about independent wrestling. And just the freedom, you know, just the freedom you have. You know, there's no no, you, you got to stay here and do what we tell you to do, you know, and I, and I know there's promotions out there that, you know, have that negative base, but, you know, as the general population of indie promotions, you know, it's okay. We, we've, we've heard about you. We, we like what you can do. Show us what you got. And they're either, wow, we want you back or, okay, thank you for coming. All right, we'll call you. 
you know, but either or, it's all about the, the, the art of fun. I mean, am I right? You know, it's, yeah. it's, you go out there and, you know, live it, you know, enter that world and live it to the fullest. Uh, and as far as the bad or the worst thing, as far as my eyes, it's just, just the politics, you know, it's, you know, and I'm, I'm going to be blown. I'm not going to throw names out there because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to live a more positive life now. You know, I'm not scared of a fight, but I'd rather just keep everything on a happy, you mm-hmm. know, go feel, but just, you know, just the same guys, you know, getting the, getting the spotlight, getting the attention, you know, and, and like I said, like I've, I've seen, guys that are all over the place that get booked out of state all over the state and good for them you know good good for you you know you're on the top of every flyer you're on the you know main page of whatever they're talking about but i watch some of these guys and though they're good in some sense there's better i've seen that get overlooked you know and some of these guys are the, the ones that are overlooked in my eyes are the ones that I want to face. And a lot of promotions have given me that opportunity to face them. And I thank them for it. But that's one thing that I would love to see change. I mean, I know I'm not going to change it because I'm just another kid that's trying to get a spot on the locker, you know, and the, the card mm. as far as these promoters go. And I understand that that's just how the world works, but worse things. I wish, you know, any promoter listening to this, don't let politics, <laughs> you know, live, kill that, you know? Yeah. Discover, discover these wrestlers for who they are. Discover them for what they can bring. You know, just because you're not some 300 pound monster does not mean you cannot throw it down in a main event. You know, I can vouch for a lot of guys, and it's good. I like when I see someone that wouldn't get that spotlight be the main champion. You know, and they they get that you know opportunity to be the champion. You know, and that's that's one thing that I want to keep seeing and. So far, it's been like that late 2014, early 2015. It's already going that route, but, you know, I know it's not going to change that quick. The same guys are still going to get the spotlight. They're still going to bore everybody. No offense to anybody listening to this and the shoot fits. <laughs> Sorry, buds, but wear it very tightly because I am referring to you all. <laughs> but, um, you know, again, I'm a blunt guy. But that's to me, is the worst thing as, is just the, the politics. Like, yeah, you're good, but wait your turn because we, we like what this guy's doing. What do you like? He's putting everybody to sleep, you know, and not in the wrestling move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Mm. Uh, uh, well, thank you very much, Eric, for joining us and, and getting to uh, share your story and, 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 you know, hopefully uh, more people listening to this definitely will, will check you out and, and check everything you're doing. If, if, if people can mm-hmm. check you out uh, at, a, at an upcoming show, uh, 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 or find you uh, on the internet or, or anywhere. Uh, where can they Where can they find you? Where can they check you out? Uh, I most definitely am mostly working in McAllen, Texas, Wrestling Revolution, every Friday night at Cino Ray, 17th Street, downtown McAllen. Um, as far as online, I know we have a YouTube page, WRTX TV. It doesn't have to be capitalized. It's all underscore WRTX TV. We have a lot of matches. Just search up Eric Shadows and you'll see a whole you know, list of matches that have been from the past or recent, you know, our camera guy's trying to keep up and post as much as he can, but, you know, give the guy a break. He has to go through an entire, you know, match card every week. So (laughs) bear with him, but for sure you can catch me there. And every month, hopefully at Inspire Pro Wrestling in Austin, Texas. Um, As far as that, yeah, those are my two favorite spots that I for sure always want to be on. So there's the answer to that. Awesome, definitely, and I and I can vouch for uh, for you know anyone that's checked out Eric before, definitely go uh, check him out and, and and see what he's all about because I, I definitely uh, can ensure that you'll be entertained. Um, so th- once you. again, th- no problem. Uh, thank you, Eric, and and me and Sorg are now going to dive into uh, some of the happenings in the world of independent wrestling. So, and hey, man, on a side note, Eamon, you are the best freaking commentator in Texas right now. <laughs> that's just me, dude. <laughs> Thank you, I, thank you. I, for, I, I, I forgot. Luckily, to, there's not there's not many, but but thank you. <laughs> I forgot to tell you on Sunday, and as I ate and then I took off, I was like, ah, damn it. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'll tell him next time. I was gonna wait for in person next month, but you know what? Might as well have everybody hear me. Eamon is the damn best as far as when it comes to commentating. Thank you. That guy thank will you. make your match that much more entertaining as far as televised goes. 
I, I appreciate I, I appreciate uh, 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 someone you know uh, appreciating that. So thank you so much. <laughs> oh man, I I appreciate your work, man. Thank you, man. You know, a lot of people don't you know do that. And there's another bad thing that I can add to that answer. The people in the back do not get the appreciation they deserve. Commentators, referees, you know, they need more of a spotlight too. You know, it's not about the guys greasing up and wetting their hair. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Awesome interview. Thanks, Eamon, uh, for uh, uh, bringing Eric on. And uh, it, 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 and yes, in editing, we're definitely leaving on. Uh, I definitely left on that that little bit at the end. Uh, so <laughs> I wanted to plug, hey, real quick, there was a little bit of indie wrestling happening. Actually, over on Wrestling Mayhem Show, we had Justin Plummer. Uh, you may have known he's been, he was on the show last year. We talked about him doing Aftershock and announcing for uh, International Wrestling Cartel here at IWC, IWCWrestling.com. But he joined us on the Wrestling Mayhem Show to talk some wrestling, and uh, we got to talk a little bit real quick and plug uh, the next IWC show. Of course, he's the new owner of IWC. Holy crap, what a change for him. Uh, and we do dive in a little bit uh, about some stuff, especially comparatively some of the guys that that you know we work with that are on the big stage and everything like that. Some great questions came up about some some rising stars uh so go check out wrestling mayhem show 451 uh to see some of those conversations that we had over there great talk it's great general wrestling talk uh we had with him uh especially you know a little bit of wrestling kingdom uh nine uh we've talked about and we'll we'll probably talk about a little bit more here as more of the guys get a chance to watch it so uh with that i know you had a big show this weekend right maybe a little bit Uh, uh, maybe a little bit uh uh, big in, in a couple senses of the word uh, uh, we had our uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling. We had our big XTC of Gold two event. Two. Uh, we mentioned Brandon Shaw mentioned the introduction of the show. It's cool to get to the point where we can put a numeral at the end of some of our shows, uh, which is interesting. Um, it was a fun event. Uh, we had a lot of really cool, talented people on that show. We also had a legit sellout, um, a kind of crazy sellout to the point where we literally ran out of chairs. To the wow. point where, uh, luckily, the the kind and awesome people in the Marquesa Hall and Theater allowed us to use some of the chairs from their lobby, uh, which are nicer, like kind of like cushion chairs, like and some like benches and stuff like that, which was kind of crazy. Um, so yeah, we kind of packed them in uh, on on January fourth, which was a, a great honor. Uh, 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 Battle Wars back in October was our largest show. Uh, up to that point, and and that was, I think, a lot due to the guy, having the Chikara Pro guys there. It definitely, definitely shows a lot of interest. It was cool to have a similar sized crowd, if not probably, I would, I don't know the exact numbers, but possibly a bigger crowd uh, this time around. Um, that's amazing to me, and 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 it was an honor. And the crowd was really electric and 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 energetic for everything, which is always nice. Um, there were a lot of phenomenal matches of the card. Uh, Chuck Taylor was there uh, in an awesome match against Ricky Starks, one you should definitely check out. Uh, we've had Ricky on before. We know you know the personalities there definitely uh, made for a great encounter. A really great uh, women's match we had between Jessica James and the debuting Kimberly uh, from uh, Shimmer, Shine, uh, Chikara fame even. Uh, uh, she was amazing, awesome to work with. Uh, pleasure to have her on the show. Uh, we had Veda Scott on as well, uh, wrestling Barbie Hayden. She was she was great as always. Also, uh, the debut of Mr. Azerbaijan from Chikara Pro, oh. which I was very happy about. Uh, uh, Azerbaijan's sexiest man, a couple a couple years running. Um, it was it was awesome. Uh, there was some really cool stuff on there. Uh, the main event was phenomenal. Uh, if you want one reason to check that show out, I feel like Matthew Palmer and Andy Dalton stole the damn show and tore the house apart. Uh, there was so much happening in that match that it was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the, and it was followed by a bit of chaos that ended with a, 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 a certain return uh, to Inspire Pro Wrestling in Ray Death Row. Oh, man. Uh, uh, for, for those that don't know, Ray was uh, sidelined with injury, with a, a lot of injury in August um, due to a motorcycle accident, uh, a motorcycle accident that many said could have ended his life, if not his career. Um and he's back, and and he seems to be in good shape. He did death row, and you know, right in the back of the head. Uh, and uh, from what I remember, uh, he was originally supposed to be the number one contender back in August uh, before he had his motorcycle accident, uh, the same night that and you know, won the title. So um, I think Ray's got a good stake in in possibly taking that belt off of Andy Dalton. 
Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there could be some really cool stuff happening now. Uh, there's a lot of intriguing stuff happening in Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, definitely, uh, we've been doing some really cool stuff as of late. I, I have to personally say I've been proud to be a part of it and, and see our growth and, and see people happy for us. But we've gotten so many compliments uh, this past weekend. Um, from people that are just like I've read them and I just feel genuinely like like happy. Um, uh, so anyone who has you know checked us out and loved us, thank you. Um, we have a couple big stuff coming up. Our February fifteenth event you can already buy tickets for. Uh, that's uh, over at our website inspireprowrestling.com. You can get tickets for February fifteenth. Uh, we don't have a, a title for the show or uh, a full card announced. However, we did announce that we will be seeing the Inspire Pro Wrestling debut of Vanessa Craven all the way from Canada. And I'm very excited for that because I've, I've gotten to see uh, Craven firsthand, and she's phenomenal. So uh, it will be a pleasure to have her February 15th. Uh, so you can get tickets for that already. Also, just today, uh, if you go to smartmarkvideo.com and SMVOD, we have three titles out. Uh, we have our Clash of the Bastard event and our No Turning Back events from June and July. Those were we're already out on Amazon, but they're now out on Smartmark Video. And now it's also the first chance you have to pick up our Relentless event from August, uh, which is an awesome, awesome event that featured uh, Mac, uh, Matthew Palmer versus One Man Mike Dale for the Inspire Pro title. Uh, an awesome women's match between Athena and Barbie Hayden, probably one of my favorites of the year. Uh, uh, I fully endorse that match as far as uh, what women's wrestling should and can be. I would encourage you to check that out. And there's a lot of really fun stuff on the show and, and also some backstage interview stuff and promos that you don't you can only get on the DVD. Um, so go check that out, uh, smartmarkvideo.com and smvod.com uh, to go check that out and go buy them up. Because nice. Because we, we like when you buy those up. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, so what is going on this weekend? Uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Uh, of course, we, we carry them over on PittsburghWrestling.com, the digitals at least. I, I don't know. Have we talked about before? You, you know, they 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 got TV. Um, they're, they're showing locally, I believe, on the cable access here in Pittsburgh. But they're also making those shows available um, online. Uh, so you can go check those out and, and, and check about a little bit about what's going on uh, with these guys. Uh, they have a big show, of course, this weekend uh, down in Connellsville, where they usually have them, including Davey Richards of Ring of Honor TNA fame uh, is, is going to be uh, involved in that. Uh, so you check it out, viciousoutcastwrestling.com. And, of course, lots of friends of the show involved with that. Jimmy Nuts returning, uh, of course. Uh, Matt Justice, Chance Prophet. Uh, David Richards is actually taking on Chris LaRusso, which is an old friend of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We need to have him back on again. Uh, friends of the Indie Mayhem Show, Facade, is going to be taking on G-Raver. That's, that'd be a fun oh, match. Nice. See those guys go at it. Um, <laughs> and their main event's actually going to be a fatal four-way, and judging by the pictures, I think it's going to be tables, ladders, and chairs uh, with uh, with a few guys here. So go check that out, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Go check out their videos. Check out their YouTube channel. Follow them on Facebook. Um, and, and go see what these guys are about. I, I think they're uh, fast becoming uh, one of the more significant uh, 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 groups here in the area. Uh, so, uh, and doing something different. It, it, they're, they're, they're delivering a different product than, right. than what IWC does, what RWA does, uh, for sure. Again, I think if you're a, uh, you know, a Chikara Ring of Honor old ECW fan and want that kind of thing, go, go check these guys out for sure. Um, and I think they're that, that option. And you have options in the area. I know we say there's too many indie promotions, right. but you have options. And there's a few really good ones, you know. Um, right. I think that's the key is to, to have, uh, if you're going to have multiples, at least have multiples that are very different. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and and, and oh, we, a different style. And we have a couple kind of not good ones, you know. I mean, okay, I mean, right. I mean obviously, obviously. You know, narrow down the, the the better ones. Obviously, I mean, I mean, if <laughs> if, if 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 I go, if, if I include, um, can I? Okay, I, okay, let me do this comparison. How many promotions okay. are within an hour drive of San Antonio? Jesus, I would count. Well, there's at least four in San Antonio. Okay, in San Antonio lives. Hour drive is technically Austin, so I would count. 
probably seven or eight and, and another okay, hour. Okay, okay, that's, that's, oh, uh, okay, you have, like, kind of a sister city thing going on. Yeah. Get, that's, that's only an hour away, really? Because, I mean, we're, we're about, talking. Well, Austin's about an hour and a half Okay. Or so. So I mean that's that's a couple big populations. So maybe it's not so bad for you guys. Um, but here, if I'm including like an hour drive, we have three, four, five, six. For your size of a of for a our state size of a city in Pittsburgh versus that, San Antonio and yeah. Austin, holy crap! You have like eight, you know, covering all that, right? right um, yeah, yeah. So you see, you see the problem. Actually, what I say six. Um, if we count the one that only did one show, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I might I, have not, another I mean, show. Not, so seven not, ish. Not not to knock any in my area, but there's some out there that I'm I'm counting technically and and using technically very okay uh, uh, loosely. Um, but yeah, so I would say around seven or eight uh, around that area, and that's just mm-hmm. in in hours, uh, uh, point of where I live. Mm-hmm. So. And you want to go if you do like two or three hours, you I would probably double that number. Um, so yeah, certainly. I mean, it's it's interesting, and, and and of course, not all of them are good. I mean, just just especially when you have that number. It, it, yeah, the, yeah, the talent pool. Yeah, you know? some are just, some are just going to rise better than others, and and talent pool is an issue too, and and um, just the idea that you know people. And it, I, I, I think it, it's a case of there needs to be an alternative. There need, you need to at least be doing something different than the other. Yes. Um, because a lot of it, I don't think any, there's a, there's a spirit in, in competition, but at the same time, be smart about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. If that makes sense. But that's for the promoters and the business owners and the uh, yeah. bookers that we are not involved in. Uh, at least no, I, I, and, 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 and hopefully we never will be. <laughs> I want to say I, never I, will be, but, uh, but I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I've, 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 while not participating in it, I've seen aspects of that side. Of course. And I know how difficult it is. Yes. And, and how stressful it is. And I, I would never wish that on anybody. I so. don't know. We got Justin Plummer, who was the lowly uh, video online show guy. Who right. just became the owner of the company. I don't know. So, so you never know. So, I so never you know. never know. Like, like every time I heard that rumor, and I was there when it was jokingly brought up amongst the previous owner, and I, I was like, <laughs> oh, no way that's happening. No way that's happening. Conversations right. with him. No way this is happening. And then it freaking happened. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been, I'm like, I've told people no way in chance in hell is Justin Plummer taking over for IWC. And guess what happened a couple weeks ago in January? <laughs> Now yeah. he's my new boss. Um, <laughs> so I'm really glad I was always nice to him. Mostly. Uh, <laughs> listen, I get testy in the middle of the show when you change the script on me. And I'm the only person. <laughs> and, yeah, and it's just like, no, no, no. All, everybody's going to see my mistake if you change this on me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, anyways, other than that, uh, but no, the, the, it, it's really good. I think it's good news, and I think it's gonna, uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It already looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. So, um, oh yeah, yeah. Anything else coming up uh, in your area? Anything else? Uh, anything else on the wire? I mean, we we have the usual thing. Have we ever figured out where, how we got on this newsletter that has? Like, I have no idea. I have no idea. There's a there's basically there's a newsletter for those that don't know that gets sent to us that basically lists close to every independent wrestling event that's happening within a week Incredible. Uh, which is which is nice and and, and it's a lot of names uh, uh i i i need to message the guy because inspire pro is misspelled but um <laughs> either way either way uh i'll, I'll take inside yeah, i'll take inside pro wrestling too um but uh yeah you know it, it's it's cool and it's 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 weird to look at it and be like oh my god all this is happening this week oh yeah in, in just random places and and places that are like oh there's wrestling in in freaking what is it i've seen Ken, you know kentucky uh i'm sure and obviously yeah there's wrestling in kentucky but like uh you know just 
off the wall places. It, um, if it wasn't absolutely ridiculous, like I would want to like just copy and repost this. Like I don't know, can we just do it in a Facebook message? Would that be too weird? Do it in like show notes, maybe? Like, I, like not a, yeah, end, not on the you... show notes, but like I don't want to share this. I, I, I you know, I think I'm going. I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to take this entire email. Let's see if there's anything <laughs> I, I have to. I have to. Uh, do, 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 blows a list. Hey, blows a list of independent wrestling events for the next two weeks. The listing is sent. We can, hey, hey, there's an email here to email the guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> get, get that entire pro fix. Yeah, yeah. So, so why don't you get on that, dude? And <laughs> I am going to paste this. If you go to the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, Facebook group. Um, the public group over there. I am pasting this straight in. Um, there is wrestling everywhere, and uh, you oh, hmm. as, as you do that, so can I bring up one thing, one last thing? Because uh, this happened while we were on, while we were breaking for the holidays, um, that I did not get to talk about. Um, so uh, Beyond Wrestling, the awesome people at Beyond Wrestling have organized a really cool event that basically touches on what I talked about on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Christmas special of what oh, I wanted from yeah. uh, Stone Claws or whatever we said about how I want people to find wrestling that they love and then just love it instead of worrying about the stuff they don't like. Uh, they are doing an event on uh, January 19th, which is a Monday, which means Monday Night Raw will be during that time, uh, called Hashtag Raw, Alter- uh, Raw Alternative. Um, it was originally called hashtag boycott raw, but then people were like, why are you boycott raw? You're, you hate WWE. And it's like, okay, whatever. Um, but, uh, basically 12 promotions, uh, top independent wrestling promotions are putting forth some of their best matches of 2014 for free that will be live streamed on beyond wrestling's YouTube page during the time of Monday night raw. And it basically is to give people an alternative uh, to uh, check out wrestling that they haven't seen before. Uh, if they don't like what they're seeing on Monday nights, which a lot of times happens to be the case if you are on social media, um, go look for something else. And, and we're giving 12 promotions uh, uh, an opportunity to show what they're about and, and bring forth something that is different from the stuff you'll see on TV that hopefully people will enjoy and then become immersed in and become fans of. And Inspire Pro is one of those groups. We're lucky to be a part of this. Um, and you know, there's groups like, uh, AIW is a part of it. Smash wrestling out of Canada, uh, interspecies wrestling, which is the complete nice. different, uh, norm, uh, from, uh, independent wrestling. Uh, St. Louis anarchy is going to be a part of it. Um, a lot of really cool groups are a part of this and, uh, it's happening on January 19th. Uh, you can go to beyond wrestling's YouTube channel, which I believe is youtube.com slash beyond wrestling. And it's during the hours of Monday night raw. So it's all three hours. And it's going to be three hours of really awesome independent wrestling, the best independent wrestling matches uh, from these organizations of 2014. Uh, So go check it out. Because, I mean, and and here's the thing. It's not a boycott. Like, if you want to watch the independent live independent wrestling stream and watch Raw, that's cool, too. Like, like that's that's awesome. uh, Drew Cordero stated, like, talking about this thing, uh, Drew Cordero, the owner of Beyond Wrestling, he says the only way you can fail at this is if you don't, if you, is if you boycott Raw and you don't watch the stream. Then you failed this. Because that, the point is, support the indies, support the guys that uh, need the love and, and need the support and, and, and need, uh, and look to grow their, the fandom of their organization and, and support them on that day. Uh, that that's what this in the end is all about. So definitely mm-hmm. go check that out. That's awesome. Awesome. We should, we should definitely we should do something with this with the Andy Mayhem show. At least some coverage. Some uh, I would we'll try to watch it. You know. Um, definitely. And yeah, definitely. There's a lot of good names in there. So cool. Real cool. Wow. That's great. Um, anything else going on? I think that's about it. Uh, the- that's all I can think of. Awesome. Indie Wrestling 2015, stronger than ever. There's a lot of alternatives, including New Japan Pro Wrestling. is on freaking pay-per-view, guys. Uh, <laughs> so we'll, I'm sure we'll be talking about that as the weeks come as more of us get a chance to watch it. Uh, so please let us know. Any Indie Wrestling you think we should be talking about? Anybody you think we should talk to? Good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com four one two two zero six WMS zero. Hit us up on Facebook Wrestling Mayhem Show, um, as well as a uh, uh, Google Plus and at Mayhem Show on the Twitter uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, 
uh, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. And, of course, I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitters. He's at Amen 2 please. Check out everything. WrestlingMayhemShow.com, um, uh, SorgatronMedia.com, PittsburghWrestling.com uh, for all your uh, wrestling download needs on, 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 on this coast, uh, of course. And we'll see you guys next time. Support some indie wrestling this week. Huh? Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Beat for the oh. taste of the poor. Yeah. Sing, sing, sing. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Wow. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>